Welcome to ECE 376, lecture number 28, Filters in the Z-Plane. Now the problem we're looking at here is, given a filter in the S-Plane, how do you transfer that filter over the Z-Plane? The reason I want to do that is because it's very easy to implement filters in the Z-Plane in software, if I know what filter to implement. So I want to come up with filter G of Z so that the frequency response of my discrete time filter is roughly the same as the frequency response of my continuous time filter. Now, a little bit of background. Laplace transforms assume that all functions are in the form of e to the st. What that does is when I differentiate, I get s e to the st, or s times y. So the Laplace operator s means the derivative of, so s times y means the derivative of y. What that does is that converts differential equations into algebraic equations in s. So if I have the following algebraic equation in s, or transfer function, cross multiply, s squared is the second derivative, s is the first derivative, this differential equation corresponds to that transfer function, or that transfer function is this differential equations. Laplace transforms are used for differential equations. Z transforms, in contrast, assume that all functions are in the form of z to the k, so that when I take the next value of y, I get z to the k plus 1, or z times y. So in the z domain, zy means the next value of y, and this should be a z. What that does is that a transfer function, such as the following, corresponds to a difference equation, where z squared is y2 samples in the future, z is y1 sample in the future, and so on. If I do a change in variable, shift everything by 2, I can have the current output as a function of the output one sample ago and two samples ago. So to convert from the s-plane to the z-plane, what I do is I assume that t, my sampling, or t time is k times the sampling rate, if I substitute, Laplace assumes everything's e to the st, or e to the s times kt, or e to the st to the k, which is e to the k. So the conversion from the s-plane to the z-plane is z is e to the st, where t is your sampling rate. With that, oh, to analyze filters in the s-plane, what I do is I plug in s equals j, j omega. So for example, if I have this filter, and the input is 4 cosine 5t plus 6 sine 5t. I'll plug in the frequency I care about is j5. This is the gain everywhere. All I care about is what's the gain at s equals j5 times the input of j5, 4 cosine and 6 sine. Multiply those out, I get a complex number where the real part means cosine minus j means sine. So it's filter analysis in the s-plane. And if I take a filter, apply a sine wave input, the red line, I get a sine wave out. Change in amplitude, change in time delay. The blue line is just the graphical version of that y of t. And the z-plane, since z is related to the s-plane, it's e to the st. I plug in z is e to the j omega t. If my sampling rate is 0.1 second, and I have the following filter with its input, I'll analyze the gain of the filter at s equals j5, or z is e to the st, times the input at that frequency. Multiply it out, I get a complex number. Real part means cosine, minus j means sine. And likewise in the z-plane. If I apply a sine wave to a filter implemented in the z-plane, the output is also a sine wave. And here you can see the sampling rate, those little stair steps in, in y. That's your sampling time. But notice it is a sine wave. There's a change in amplitude and a time delay. Likewise, I need two ways, two numbers to represent that. That's a complex number. To convert from the s-plane to the z-plane, the relationship is z is e to the st. Poles convert as z equals e to the st. Zeros convert as e to the st. Plus throw in a gain. Uh, if I have one degree of freedom, uh, gain to throw out in front, I can match the gain at one frequency. Typically, you match the gain at dc. For example, if I have this filter in the s-plane, I want to find its discrete time equivalent. First, assume a sampling rate. If the sampling rate is 10 milliseconds, I'll then convert. My pull at minus 2 goes to e to the st, becomes 0 0.9802. Pull at minus 10 becomes 0 0.9048. So my filter's in this form. I've got a pole. This is the corresponding pole at s equals minus 2. This is the corresponding spot at s equals minus 10. 
To find K, mass the gain at one frequency, typically mass the gain at DC. At DC, G of S has a gain of 1.5. Pick K so that at DC, G of Z also has a gain of 1.5. And that gives you 0 0.002827. So here's my filter in the Z-plane. And this small number is very typical of discrete time filters. We oftentimes have a very small change, a very small number. That means that in one sample, in 10 milliseconds, the output doesn't change by very much. If, I, if the two filters are the same, they should have the same step response and the same frequency response. From signals and systems, time and frequency are related. If it's the same filter, they should have the same response. If I plot the step response of the two filters, you can see they're basically the same. It's the same filter. If I plot the frequency response of the filter, they're basically the same. So likewise, these two filters are basically the same. G of Z is the discrete time equivalent of G of S. If I want to implement a filter, uh, the whole reason for doing this is it's a lot easier implementing filters in the Z-plane than the S-plane. What I do is I cross-multiply, solve for the highest power of Z, and what it tells me is that this is y of k plus 3, y 3 samples in the future, minus 1.3 y, 2 samples in the future. Solve for the highest power, do a time shift, and this is the output at time k is a function of previous outputs and previous inputs. That's essentially the program used to implement your filter. Uh, for example, if this is my filter, the way I implement it is cross multiply, bring these right, gives you a sign change. y of k is plus 1.3 y of k minus 1, minus 1.6 y of k minus 2, minus 0.6 y of k, supposed to be times, uh, plus 0.2 times x of k minus 2 minus 0.9 x of k minus 3. So you can almost write the difference equation, your program, straight from the transfer function. Uh, note that if you want to change a digital filter, all you need to do is change one line of code. If you want to have a filter with complex poles or zeros, it's not a problem. All I do is just change these polynomials to have real roots, complex roots. I can do real poles, complex poles, just as easily as real poles. Uh, likewise for zeros. So digital filters are much more versatile than continuous time filters. Um, that's part of the reason to try to implement filters with a microprocessor. But a common rule of thumb is that anything I can do in hardware, I can do in software. Sometimes one is easier than another. Filters, one example. I can build a filter in the S-plane. I can build a filter in the Z-plane. 